Hello. Some time ago I made some movies about wind impact uh, using our great summon planning tool. And I'd like to thank you very much for all the viewers who had seen these uh, movies on our YouTube channel of the ISIMS uh, company. And uh, I'd like to thank you for the thumbs up and applause uh, in LinkedIn. Um, but apart from the appraisal, there were also some questions. And so I had the idea to come up with some follow-up movies. Uh, specifically, I was asked whether I could provide some uh, practical experiments to be done with your ship to get more data of your uh, wind impact to be um, used later in practice. And there were also some questions about stability, uh, specifically in the region of core stable or core unstable conditions under wind. And uh, finally, there were some questions about how these wind forces are looking like and how could, be they, could they be measured. Okay, so for today, uh, I will go for the first uh, part. And uh, to be um, more detailed, um, First, I like to give some extra information about estimating the wind drift speed. Um, maybe also some limits about wind and uh, current limits um, to be potentially encountered by use of thrusters working against the wind or current. Okay, so um, to give you some information how we'll do that, I will do some experiments uh, for drifting speed and enter this data in a sort of a diagram to afterwards estimate what is the average drift speed under wind. And for this I will use this uh, summon planning tool. This is our ship. It's again a passenger, a cruise ship. And um, uh, I will set some wind here. So I have to do it here via this uh, small tap. Uh, you know already about that. So it's uh, for the first uh, um, part, it's 10 knots, 10 knots of wind speed. And what you see is the ship starts drifting. And uh, the final drift speed is uh, 0.57. Uh, knots, so less than one knot, and um, the, then we change it again, let's say to 20. So the final drift speed is double, it's 1.5 knots, so it's increasing. And uh, if we would look to uh, 30 knots, then we finally arrive with 2.2, uh, 2.25 um, uh, knots. And the um, final part will be maybe here, uh, we go to 40 knots. Um, drifting speed is then uh, about three knots, three knots. So this is a double of 20 knots. And if we enter this data in our diagram, as be shown here, so all the data we read here, 0 0.75, this is the first entry which we have here. And uh, the second part is uh, for uh, 20 knots of wind. We had the uh, 1.5 knots for the drift speed. And for 30 knots, we arrive here with 2.24. Uh, and if we continue, then we would go to these data. Um, so this is a measurement of the drift speed. What we see from this uh, result is uh, the drift speed is nearly 
on one line, it's a linear relationship. Uh, so this would mean if you know about that, only one drift speed would be enough. So let your ship drift and estimate the final drift speed. And this will be fine to calculate the average of your drift speed under wind. So in this case, the, uh, in this sample, the drift speed is 7.5% of the wind speed. For 10 knots of wind, we arrive with 0.75, so it's 7.5%. Um, how could we estimate now what we can achieve to balance this wind for, against the drifting speed with our thrusters? So, what is the maximum wind speed to be encountered by thrusters? And for this, we could also use our summon planning tool. I will do that. So here we are again. And for this reason, we will cancel uh, the wind speed. So it's zero wind speed. So no wind at all. I will move it a little bit uh, in this direction. And now we try to first uh, estimate what is the maximum drifting or crabbing speed we can achieve with our thrusters. So if I, for instance, use the stern thruster full to port side, okay, this would be resulting in a turning circle, but if we use our bow thruster to 60% to 70%, so this would mean our ship is uh, crabbing sideways and the transfer speed is 1.75 knots. So this is important. Uh, 1.75 knots. The bow is a little bit uh, faster than the stern, as we can see here. But what can we do with this? Uh, so we go uh, again back in our diagram. Sorry. So this is now our drifting speed with our thrusters. And we arrived here with 1.7 Five. So this 1.75, we go in our data here and we can read this would balance roughly a wind speed of 23 knots. 20, 23 knots. Um, we can use this diagram here or we could also use a formula. So to calculate the limited or the wind speed limit we need the maximum drift speed for 100% thruster. This was our 1.75 knots. This is this here. Multiplied with the percentage of wind to drift speed times 100. This is two, uh, 23 knots. Let's check it. So we go back in our uh, experimental part. Um, so we have it here. Um, if we have the uh, thruster working the ship to the north, then we go and set some wind against this. So it's 23 knots. This was the result. And then we see, okay, this is a little bit uh, not, not, not really balanced, but we could use our thrusters uh, to, to move the bow up and then we see uh, we, had, we have seen that the bow is a little bit uh, faster going so we could balance this wind speed. So this is a, a good exercise <laughs> with your ship if, uh, if you have the chance to do that um, to estimate what your maximum drifting speed is by use of the thrusters or if you don't have bow and stern thruster you can use also your maybe with a uh, twin screw ship can rudder and uh, propulsion to crab uh, for for crabbing and uh, so the maximum crabbing speed is very important for first to encounter current so you immediately know what current speed you can manage or to estimate roughly the wind speed of in this case uh, 23 knots. This might help in certain um, conditions.